It was past midnight in Prague. Three engineers were crammed into a tiny apartment, staring at a refactor tool they'd just hacked together. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. And for the first time in weeks, writing Java didn't feel like punishment. What came next would change developer tools forever. In 2001, those same engineers launched a Java IDE and asked developers to pay $500 for it. The idea was so absurd, it sounded like a joke. Eclipse was free. NetBeans was free. IntelliJ? No one had heard of them. No flashy branding, no VC millions, no Silicon Valley address, just three coders who were tired of fighting their tools. That IDE, IntelliJ, didn't just survive. It changed how developers thought about productivity. It became the foundation for Android Studio. It helped power the rise of Kotlin. And behind it all was a company that defied every conventional rule of tech business. Bootstrapped, independent, and quietly brilliant. This is the untold story of IntelliJ. A story of rebellion, relentless focus, and a tool that made developers fall in love again. The year 2000 was not a great time to start a software company. The dot-com bubble had burst, and the crash was still reverberating across global tech. Investors were pulling back, startups were folding, and the job market was tightening. But in Prague, three Russian developers, Sergei Dmitriev, Valentin Kipyatkov, and Eugene Belyaev, weren't thinking about market conditions, they were thinking about pain. All three were experienced software engineers working with Java. Their tools, especially Borland's JBuilder, were frustratingly outdated. Development felt like a constant battle with the IDE. Basic operations like renaming a class or refactoring a method could break the code base or waste precious time. There was no pleasure in writing code anymore, just stress and friction. So they built a plugin a small utility that made renaming Java elements simple and safe. It wasn't much, but it solved a very real problem. That plugin was called IntelliJ Renamer. It did well, surprisingly well, well enough to give the three engineers a radical idea. What if they built the entire IDE from scratch, one that worked the way they thought it should, a tool for developers by developers, with intelligence baked in? They founded IntelliJ Software. Their motto was, half joke, half declaration, develop with pleasure. In January 2001, they released IntelliJ version 1. The product was lean, fast, and focused. It wasn't trying to compete with Eclipse or NetBeans feature by feature. It was doing something different. It could analyze your code while you typed. It highlighted errors in real time, offered smart suggestions, and let you refactor entire projects without breaking things. These weren't just nice-to-haves. They were revolutionary in the Java world. But it had one major problem. Price. Eclipse was backed by IBM and free. NetBeans was backed by Sun Microsystems and also free. JetBrains priced IntelliJ at nearly $500 per license. For many, it seemed suicidal. Online forums called it a ripoff, unnecessary and dead on arrival. And yet, something strange happened. Developers who tried IntelliJ didn't want to go back. They described it like switching from a typewriter to a Mac. Productivity soared, development became fun again. One early user said, I went from dreading refactors to actually looking forward to them. IntelliJ was building a cult following, not with marketing, but with joy. It reminded developers what coding was supposed to feel like, creative, fluid, and even fun. And that's a feeling developers are chasing again today, especially when working across massive, fast-moving code bases. That's where today's sponsor, AugmentCode, comes in. AugmentCode is an AI assistant built specifically for experienced developers working with large code bases. It integrates seamlessly with JetBrains IDEs, VS Code, Vim, GitHub, and even Slack, so no matter where you code, Augment is right there with you. It brings the full context of your code base into every interaction, so it feels like pairing with a principal engineer who knows your system inside and out. With tools like Chat, you can ask questions about your code and get instant, context-aware answers. Next edit gives you guided, multi-step refactors, and completions go far beyond autocomplete, offering suggestions that actually understand your dependencies and architecture. It even supports Chrome extensions and lets you bring the Augment Slack bot into your team's flowcharts, so you're supported wherever you work. Try it free for 30 days by clicking link in the description and experience AI that's built for how professionals actually code. Now back to IntelliJ. Originally named IntelliJ Software, the company soon rebranded as JetBrains, marking its ambition to build more than just a Java tool. But IntelliJ IDEA remained its crown jewel, even as it entered one of the fiercest tool wars in programming history. In the early 2000s, Eclipse ruled the enterprise with its massive plugin ecosystem. NetBeans was entrenched in academia and GUI development. IntelliJ was leaner, faster, and more focused. It didn't match its rivals feature for feature, it outthought them. Developers noticed, and slowly, a cult following began to form. Still, it wasn't perfect. IntelliJ had a reputation for being resource-hungry. 
Early versions were slow to start, devoured RAM, and could lag under heavy projects. For many, it was too heavyweight compared to emerging minimalist editors, and the pricing remained a point of friction. Yet JetBrains kept building, launching ReSharper for Visual Studio and eventually transforming IntelliJ IDE into a platform. One engine powered a whole family, WebStorm, PyCharm, RubyMine, and more. At the core of IntelliJ was a breakthrough, the Program Structure Interface, or PSI. Rather than treating code like plain text, IntelliJ built a tree-like model of your code structure. This enabled features like safe refactors, instant error detection, and context-aware suggestions, even across huge code bases. In 2009, JetBrains open-sourced IntelliJ's core, launching a free community edition. This move was met with mixed reactions. Some believed they were caving to Eclipse, others saw it as smart strategy. Either way, it broadened access and allowed plugins to flourish. JetBrains also nurtured one of the richest plugin ecosystems in the developer world. With a powerful SDK and an open plugin marketplace, developers could customize everything, from Vim-style key bindings to AI code tools, database UIs, and cloud integrations. Many niche plugins grew into essential workflows, making IntelliJ feel like an IDE that evolved with you. In 2013, Google approached JetBrains, frustrated with Eclipse's Android support. The result? Android Studio, built on IntelliJ Community Edition. It launched in 2014 and became the default Android IDE. JetBrains no longer had to sell IntelliJ. Google did it for them. But not everything was smooth. In 2015, JetBrains announced they were switching all their tools to a subscription-only pricing model. Developers were furious, and for a moment it seemed like JetBrains had lost its way. But instead of retreating, they did something rare in tech. They listened, fast, and transparently. The backlash was swift and loud. Developers accused them of greed, of betraying their loyal users. Hacker news threads exploded. JetBrains quickly rolled out fallback licenses, loyalty discounts, and offline options. The recovery was fast, but the wound remained in parts of the community. Then came the rise of the editor revolution. Sublime Text became the darling of web developers, blazing fast, beautifully minimal. Atom followed, offering open source hackability. IntelliJ, with its long startup times and clunky indexing, started to look outdated to some. Critics complained about its steep learning curve, unintuitive keyboard shortcuts, and sluggish performance on older machines. And then came the real competition, Visual Studio Code. Backed by Microsoft, lightweight and powered by a rich plugin ecosystem, VS Code soared to dominance. Many developers switched for its speed, simplicity, and deep language support. JetBrains didn't ignore the shift toward lightweight tools. In 2021, they launched Fleet, a next-generation editor designed to combine the best of both worlds, the responsiveness of VS Code with IntelliJ's deep smarts. They also released JetBrains Gateway for remote development and began experimenting with AI assistants baked into their IDEs. IntelliJ wasn't standing still, it was evolving. IntelliJ's heavier footprint became a growing complaint, yet it never tried to be lightweight. IntelliJ was built for power, deep static analysis, safe refactoring, and full project insight. It retained its position among Java, Kotlin, and complex enterprise developers. IntelliJ also helped launch Kotlin, JetBrains' own language. Initially dismissed as just another JVM language, Kotlin gained traction with Android developers, especially after Google made it a first-class Android language in 2017. IntelliJ, naturally, had the best Kotlin support out of the box. Beyond Java and Kotlin, IntelliJ's ecosystem expanded into the full stack. WebStorm became a favorite among JavaScript and TypeScript developers, offering intelligent support for frameworks like React, Vue, and Angular. Backend integrations for Node.js, Docker, and GraphQL turned JetBrains tools into full-stack powerhouses, not just Java IDEs. But it's not for everyone, it's still large, still sometimes slow, and while the community edition is free, the most powerful features remain locked behind the ultimate paywall. In a world where free, fast, and flexible are the norm, IntelliJ IDEA is the premium alternative. It didn't win by being cheap or trendy, it won by delivering depth, trust, and precision. It earned developer love not through hype, but through empathy, understanding what programmers needed before they even asked. Over 10 million developers use it today. IntelliJ didn't try to be the editor for everyone. It became the IDE for those building complex, serious software. Its journey through mockery, backlash, praise, and persistence proves that with enough care, even a midnight hack in Prague can change how the world codes. Despite the features, the benchmarks, and the plugins, IntelliJ's greatest innovation wasn't technical. It was emotional. Most tools ask developers to adapt to them. IntelliJ flipped that. It adapted to the developer. The moment you typed a line and saw a real-time suggestion that made sense. The moment you renamed a class and nothing broke. The moment Alt plus Enter fixed the exact thing you were thinking. That's when it stopped feeling like a product and started feeling like a partner. 
Over the years, developers didn't just use IntelliJ, they trusted it. With legacy systems, with deadlines, with code that could cost millions if broken, IntelliJ quietly earned that trust, not with hype, but with consistency. In an industry full of disposable frameworks and trendy tools, that kind of long-term relationship is rare and powerful. Because when developers trust their tools, they build better things. Today, IntelliJ IDEA is taught in universities, featured in coding boot camps, and used by engineers at Google, Amazon, and Netflix. It's not just popular, it's foundational. Two decades later, that same keystroke, Alt plus Enter, is still making developers smile, not because it's clever, but because it reminds them that their tools can be built with empathy.